Good afternoon, everyone. Thanks for joining us for our next Evolution of Sport talk. We have Kevin Goodfellow, who is the founder of Sports Data Hub. And his talk will focus on how Google, Yahoo, and Facebook have turned the world of analytics upside down. This is actually his second year given an EOS talk. And uh, to find out more about Sports Data Hub, please visit their booth in the main hallway and read Kevin's blog posts on our website. And so please join me in welcoming Kevin Goodfellow. Okay, I can hear it now. Um, yeah, so like Jordy said, uh, you may not know it, but Google, Yahoo, and Facebook have, have turned the world of analytic systems upside down. And more has changed in the last 24 months than maybe the last 24 years. And the changes are big, I mean, literally big. These internet companies are dealing with incredible volumes of data, and they've had to uh, approach it in a whole new way. So let me take a minute just to explain um, what I mean, and uh, don't worry, it, it's not technical. Um, so Google in the very early years was battling uh, the early data volumes of the internet and trying to figure out a different way of handling, indexing all those uh, search terms for everyone that uses Google. And there were no products out there that they could buy that were economical for a startup like Google. So. Google being Google, uh, they invented their own method. So in a nutshell, this method has essentially two big parts, and I'll boil it down to, to simplify it, but in combination, they're pretty interesting. So the first part is they thought to themselves, okay, so we have this big data. Why don't we break this big data up into independent chunks of data, and then we take those independent chunks of data and spread them across thousands of servers. And rather than process those chunks kind of uh, one at a time, we can allow each server to process its own chunk and do it very, very quickly. So that was the first idea they had. And that's not necessarily a radical idea. That's kind of processing in parallel. Uh, there's nothing interesting about that uh, by itself. But when you combine it with their kind of second revelation is, OK, if we have these thousands of servers that we're processing all this data in parallel, that's going to cost a lot of money and we want to buy servers cheap, and we want to buy servers that um, we can afford. And unfortunately, when you buy cheap servers, you buy parts that are more uh, uh, unreliable or will more, be more likely to fail. And this is a problem when you have thousands of servers. So the second key part they came up with was, okay, if we have these independent chunks of data on these servers and a server could die and fail, why don't we just copy that independent chunk on a couple other servers? So if it does fail, we won't lose any data. And if we're the, in the middle of processing something, we can still continue because we can just use one of those other copies instead. So this allowed them to expand uh, rapidly their infrastructure using extremely cheap hardware without losing any data, without stopping processes that run. And this was the foundation of uh, early Google and one is, uh, is one of the main reasons that they took off like a rocket. Now, at that time and a few years later, other companies like uh, Yahoo and Facebook later on and LinkedIn, they were bumping up against the exact same problem. They had major data issues and they were trying to figure out on their own what to do. And they were all struggling and no one was having a big breakthrough. Um, and then an amazing thing happened. Google decided to publish some papers that describe how they solved the problem. So these other companies that were looking for solutions suddenly had this solution fall right into their lap. Google basically pointed out how you should be doing it, and they thought it was great. So they all got together and started an open source project, which is, uh, for those of you who don't know, a collaborative uh, project that developers get together. They build code together, and in return, everyone can use it for free. So it's a, a really good way of sharing over the years that followed, uh, Facebook and Yahoo and LinkedIn and all these big internet companies made a ton of improvements to this Hadoop project. They created uh, other software packages that use Hadoop, and they rolled all of that development back into Hadoop itself. So Hadoop quickly evolved into something very, very powerful that all these companies had built their big data analytics systems on. So it's extremely powerful. The 
main problem that uh, at that time with Hadoop is that it was extremely technical and only hardcore programmers really could use it and make it work. And for these big internet companies, that's great. Uh, but for those of us that aren't uh, hardcore programmers, um, not so great. But the radical thing that's happened in the last two years is that an ecosystem has formed around Hadoop. There are businesses that have been built on top of the Hadoop platform. There are a number of uh, tools now that are compatible with Hadoop that make it much, much more easier uh, to work, uh, faster, more efficient. Um, and it's becoming more of a mainstream analytic tool. So that's kind of the backstory on what Google did, how that helped uh, create Hadoop and the folks that are using it. The question becomes, so how does that apply to sports? Um, and if, for those of you that saw my video or were here last year, remember that I talked about three challenges that sports teams are facing. And to quickly review, it's, it's width, depth, and speed. So width is the concept of data diversity. So that uh, could be game data, could be psychological data, could be physiological data, could be salary data. It could be even standard things like sales, marketing, and even ticketing data like we've been hearing uh, today. So that's the concept of uh, width. Depth is the incredible detailed data that you get from maybe automated systems such as pitch tracking, player tracking, uh, and sensor data, which is uh, growing rapidly. So that's depth. And then speed is acquiring, processing, and analyzing, and then making decisions on all those uh, data sets faster. So people want to do all those things faster and faster. So those are the, the three things. And Hadoop is well suited for addressing width, depth, and speed for many of the reasons I've explained. But there are additional reasons that it makes sense to take a look at Hadoop for the, the sports world. Um, and I've boiled those down to price, power, and people. So price is uh, the main driver of uh, decisions. Obviously, you gotta spend money. And spending as little money as possible on things um, is always a good thing. And with Hadoop being an open source project, uh, you can use it for free. So there's no big upfront software uh, cost to incur. There's no proprietary software that you need to buy. Um, there is an ecosystem of people that continually improve Hadoop. So as you use it, it will improve and get better year over year. There's no big upgrades that you have to pay for. Um, it's something that comes along. It's up to you to, to work out the upgrades, but the software itself will be improved. Now, the, the second point, that the solution that Google came up with with using the commodity hardware is an important point because it allows you to use hardware from any vendor that provides a server hardware. So it can be Dell or any, any number of internet suppliers that, that create those servers. So it allows you to shop around and get a better price. If you're locked in with a certain vendor solution, you have one choice and you have to pay what, what, uh, what they charge. So it gives you a lot more flexibility in terms of uh, the pricing of your, your servers that support these kinds of analytic needs. The second uh, point is uh, power. So obviously, no sports teams are Google-sized or ever will be Google-sized, so, but that's not really the point. The point is that Google is an example of how big uh, Hadoop can scale. Uh, sports teams can have the benefit of starting small uh, for a reasonable cost with commodity hardware, and then grow as you grow. So as you need more processing power, or space, what have you, you're able to add these uh, fairly reasonably cheap uh, servers to expand as you go along. So it allows you to invest in technology over a longer period of time to get that payback. So if you're a smaller team, those investments you make will last longer. The third issue is people. And this is probably one of the most important points is that in the analytics space today in business, it is very difficult to find um, analysts and it's very difficult to find big data technologists or database people. And the main reason for this is that universities cannot afford to buy proprietary hardware. Um, I've ignored the slides the whole time, so it doesn't matter. Um, so they can't uh, afford to have this proprietary hardware in, in universities. And because of that, they can't incorporate it into their curriculum. So the only way you get your hands on these kinds of technologies is to go out into the industry, work for companies that have these uh, hardware software packages, and cut your teeth on it and um, 
gain your experience that way. That really reduces the pool of people that have those skills, and they're particularly hard to find. With Hadoop being an open source project, uh, universities are already including this in their curriculum, which means that computer science and statistics folks that come out of university are ready to uh, take on the world in terms of understanding how Hadoop works. And that increases the pool of people that are available for sports teams. So your interns will be better, your entry level staffers will be better, you'll have a larger uh, pool to draw from. So you can see that the creation of um, the Google solution and Hadoop from Yahoo, Google, and Facebook has uh, significantly affected the world of sports an or analytics, uh, changing it forever. And I think there's an opportunity for Hadoop to be used in sports analytics uh, in the near future um, to quickly analyze data that is ever wider and deeper. And that's the conclusion of my talk. I have um, one announcement to make before we ask um, or have some questions. Uh, we have a, a, a new project called Open Sports Data Hub, which is a sports analytics platform that is based on open source technologies that uh, we're gonna be giving away to sports teams for free. So if you're a team and, and you wanna know more information about it or you're a company that uh, would like to be a partner and a plug-in on that, uh, come talk to me later on. Questions? So all these big internet companies that are using Hadoop, mm -hmm. but are, do you know of companies that are using it for sports specific analysis and is, can you say more about what you're planning to do with this with the sports specific hub? Mm -hmm. uh, I'm not aware I take of it you're using Hadoop. For the, for yeah, project. yeah, uh -huh. it's gonna be one of the open source technologies we use. No, I'm not aware of any sports teams using it yet. Um, I know that companies like Ticketmaster are moving towards Hadoop they have super huge infrastructures and Hadoop is just catching on in the last two years. And so it's hitting mainstream in terms of those large businesses. There's many Fortune 500 companies that are now installing Hadoop and using it. That's where usually these big data technologies hit first. Oh, so the Open Sports Data Hub, we're gonna be basing it around uh, Hadoop. So we can start small and grow as, as your needs grow. So that's essentially what we're going to be using for. Sports data, so it could be uh, game data, physiological data, psychological data, could be sensor data, could be ticketing data, could be sales data, marketing data, any type of data. Whose data is it? Sorry? Whose data is it? Who does it belong it's to? the team's data, so that's a good point. Uh, the solution would be installed at the team site in their existing infrastructure, if they have it. Uh, it would allow them to import external data into it and incorporate whatever internal data they already have. So it's a completely internal solution. Did that answer your question? Okay. Kevin, very good talk. Um, yeah, it's me. Oh, um, there you are, you moved. Yeah. <laughs> Um, could you, uh, can you talk about the differences in the way that you would implement analytics on a big data slash Hadoop type database compared to a uh, type of analysis you would do on SQL uh, database? Right, the uh, main issues with SQL database is scalability and it is a big cost of uh, big SQL implementations. There are plenty of vendors that have big SQL database um, products to sell. They are very expensive. Um, Hadoop, on the other hand, is a slightly different animal. It doesn't work in the same way that SQL databases work. Um, Google and, and the folks that came up with Hadoop essentially have a more simplified way of handling that data. Um, there are layers that sit on top of Hadoop that make it look like a SQL database, so it will be familiar to anyone that knows SQL those kinds of technologies. Yep. Can, can translate and Hadoop allows you to do even more uh, complicated things that SQL is not able to do because of the nature of it. 
Do you know of any uh, service providers that offer Hadoop as part of their kind of stack that they offer, like Google itself? Yeah, Amazon, uh, they have, uh, if you're familiar with their EC2 servers, they also have a big data uh, Hadoop um, service that they offer. So that's a good way to host and test out a few things on your own. However, I will tell you that if you have any substantial amount of data, the latency between those virtual servers uh, will kill you. So it's good to test and do small amounts of work, but eventually, if you have significant data volumes, you will need your own installation of Hadoop. It's a good place to start. Um, Henry Johnson from Flatscope. Um, we have uh, 3D tracking on radar sensors, and uh, we track you know, all kinds of stuff like golf mm -hmm. balls and barbed flags and mm -hmm. baseball caps and, and so on. Yes. And um, how would you anticipate um, this analytics package or plugin that you were talking about, how would that actually function in terms of algorithms? And what do you, how, do you, how are you going to do that? Yeah, the outline of it right now is that uh, we'll have partners that we work with that essentially we will help them create plugins so that a team, if they have this open sports data hub uh, platform installed, could easily turn on those features and import that data. Now, how that data gets imported and the paths that it takes to get to the team can vary. Uh, if it's a small amount of data, which would not be your situation, um, a service provider could probably uh, adequately handle those requests for a small amount of data, but big data volumes like that would probably have to be um, either prepared for on your end, um, or uh, we could help you be an intermediate, so we would load it once and we would take all the pounding from the various different teams that need to download that. Incremental options are always good too, so you don't have to send the whole set again, you can just send the latest games or what have you. So many different ways to handle uh, those things. Running stock HBase or yeah, HBase is definitely in the cards for the future. HBase is not stable right now, um, and the installations even at big internet companies have been a pain in the butt, uh, to be quite frank. Um, but I do see that coming very soon, and those would uh, allow you to do very low latency uh, applications, kind of web applications, so you instantly get responses. Um, Hadoop is good for big uh, data volumes that you can crunch in 10 seconds, but it takes 10 seconds to get you know, a response back. So HBase is in the cards for the future, but it's not something we probably need today. Have you looked at Cassandra at all? Yeah, we've looked at Cassandra, and Cassandra has um, some different uh, benefits in the file system. Um, however, for analytic loads, Cassandra doesn't seem to be the choice right now. There's some hybrid approaches. Uh, Datastax is a company that does a Cassandra front end on a Cassandra file system with a Hadoop uh, MapReduce analytics backside. So they're slightly different animals. Um, not that you couldn't do some of the things with Cassandra, but um, Hadoop seems to be better suited. It has a larger ecosystem around it, which is a big deal. You don't want to try to invest in a technology that may not be the winner when it comes you know, two or three years from now. So. Uh, sports Data Hub has been traditionally a consulting company, so we work with sports teams directly to help them with their own solutions. Uh, Open Sports Data Hub is essentially productizing some of the things that we've learned over time and adding uh, other vendor data abilities into it. Um, so we're just announcing it now at the conference. Uh, we've been pre-announcing it uh, amongst people that we know already. But we're looking for, we have 15 partners already, data partners, and we're looking for more. Uh, we're looking, looking for teams that want to be early adopters and get on our list. Great. Uh, thank you so much, Kevin. Appreciate Great. it. And join me in uh, thanking Mr. Goodfellow. Thank you. Uh,